Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm just going to be doing a really quick example and kind of a walkthrough on how to use setter and getter functions, which are a very powerful feature of GDScript. And if you're just getting started with Godot, then this is definitely a very powerful feature, which you might want to take a look at so that you can utilize it in your projects. So we're going to start out with what is a setter or a getter function. So that may seem kind of daunting if you're just getting started with GDScript, but what it's essentially doing is assigning a function to a variable. And then whenever that variable changes in a couple specified ways, which I'll explain later, then it will execute all the code in the function which you've linked to the variable. So a basic setup, which you probably would have, is something like maybe a health variable for the player and this could be like a float and by default we'll set it to 100 and then we're going to start out with a setter function which we can simply link to the variable by separating this and then typing set and making it equal to a new function that we will have to create and this will be called set health and then we'll just copy the name of this and paste it down here. We'll just write function set health. And then inside of here, we're going to define a, an argument. This will be called the new value, which will be a float. And then inside of here, all we're going to do is set the health equal to the new value, which we have received. Now this current example here, assumes that you're just using the set function. And since we are triggering this block of code, when we actually change this variable internally or externally, then we need to manually set the health to the new value which we changed it to. So just remember that if you set up a setter function, you'll probably want to write this as the first line in your function. Otherwise, this variable will not actually update, but instead will just call the function. Now, an example of where you might want to use something like this, because maybe if you're new to game development, you might be like, all right, well, cool, I can call some code whenever my variable changes. So let's say like the enemy damages the player and then you want to change the health and that would activate this code here. And you might be thinking like, what is that good for? Well, what you could do from there is update the UI. So let's say you have like a health bar on the screen. Then all you would need to do here is maybe emit a signal to update the health bar UI. And you would just write that code right under here, obviously pass in the new value, and then you could just go from there. Now I'm also gonna show you how to set up a getter function really quick, um, which is basically the same thing, but you would just write get here instead of set. And then you would obviously take out your new value argument here. But we're actually going to assume that you want to set up both a setter function and a getter function on the same variable. So in order to do that, all you have to do is separate this with a comma and then type get equals, and we'll make a new function for this as well, which will be get health. And then this function will trigger whenever anything accesses the health variable, either internally or externally. And we'll just copy this name, create a new function down here. And then we'd obviously not pass in any arguments. And then the only thing we need to define inside of our getter function is making sure that we are simply returning our health value, which is defined up here. And then you can obviously define any code that you'd want to execute inside of this function. And it will simply be called whenever this value is accessed via the getter function. Now, one more quick thing to note that some of you might be wondering about is if you change a variable inside of the same script, will it actually activate this method? And the shorter answer is yes. It didn't used to be this way. In previous versions of Godot, you would have to call self dot and then change the variable um, with the self keyword. But currently in Godot 4 or whatever version I'm in, I'm running this in Godot 4.1.1. And currently you can just change the variable and it will actually trigger the set and get functions from within the same script. So you don't need to worry about structuring stuff depending on if it's local or external. But that's gonna do it for this video. Just thought I'd get a quick tutorial out there for setting these up. But if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.